Hello everyone, this week's parsha is parsha at Shemot, we're beginning Sefer Shemot of course, we're actually going to be hearkening back to Sefer Breshit, because the beginning of parsha at Shemot really starts off with a, almost a recap of, a, of parsha at Yigash, when we hear about you know the descendants of Yaakov coming down to Egypt, there are Shivim Nafesh, right, there are 70 souls, um, and it reiterates and it goes through the 11 of the 12 sons of Yaakov, uh, and Yosef is only mentioned in verse 5, so that's where we're going to be. But he called Nefesh Yotze Yerech Yaakov Shivim Nefesh, right? And uh, all the souls of uh, that were Yaakov's descendants were 70. Be Yosef Hayabim Yitzrayim. And Yosef was in Egypt. So Yosef here is mentioned separately. And on this Rashi says, so why is, uh, why is Yosef being mentioned separately? El Elohu Diachal Tzidkatra Shal Yosef is to tell you the righteousness of Yosef. Who Yosef Haroe Etzon Aviv? He is Yosef who is shepherding the flock of his father. Who Yosef Shabbi Mitzrayim Benasa Melech Ve'Omer Betzidko? He is the same Yosef who was in Egypt and was made into king and was still the same uh, the same level of righteousness as he was back when he was seventeen and among his uh, with his father and among his brothers, and that's a that's an amazing thing. But the question is, how do we get that from the pasuk? Um, after all, it can mean anything. You know, like Yosef was in Egypt. We know Yosef is in Egypt. We've just read the past four parshas, which told us that Yosef was in Egypt. So what is this coming to teach us? Well, what is new here? So uh, it says the Komet HaMencha that actually it's because of a replay of the same word within the same puzzle. That is to say, let's look back at the puzzle. It says, Vayhi kol nefesh, one, Yotze Yerach Yaakov, shivim nefesh, Yosef HaVim Yitzrayim. Why do we need to hear this, uh, this nefesh element? And so that is, we need to know that uh, the word nefesh is a, is a heavily laden motif word when it comes to Yaakov in contrast to Esau. That is to say, um, with Esau, Esau had six children and they're called nefashot. The reason why they use the plural with, uh, with Esau's children is because each child had his own sense of direction. Each of his children went his own way. He had no sense of wanting to preserve what came before him, uh, any sense of preserving anything that was uh, worth anything or worth, uh, had any dignity or value of itself. They did their own thing. And therefore, the six children are called Nefesh. And yet, Yaakov's children, even though he had 70 descendants, are called Nefesh. Because they're all together, they had a, the same sense of a unity of purpose, they all had the same goals, and this desire to preserve something that was worthwhile and uh, hold true to a certain standard. So it's specifically in reference to that, that we hear the Yosef Femitzrayim to tell us that Yosef was true to that legacy, that he also stayed true. Okay. So, that is point one. But then we move on. And we see that not only did Yosef retain his madriga, not only did he stay at Tzadik, but it is possible to say that there was a certain level that he attained, that he also gained while he was in Mitzrayim. Now, let's see how that works. Because we know that Reuven heard uh, some painful words at the end of last week's parsha with the brachas. We said, uh, you know, Reuven was uh, pachas kamaim or pachas maim. Um, see the bracha there, that... Because of his sin with Bilha, because of what he did, he lost the Bechora. Okay, so that's what it was. He sinned with uh, with uh, what he did with Bilha, and he lost the, Be- the Bechora. Okay, and we know that Yosef picked it up. And the Mepharshim tell us that Yosef uh, attained the status of Bechor. But the question of the Avni Nezer, he was a, a Hasidic Rebbe who lived probably about 100 years ago. He says he was the first Sokachov Rebbe. So he says, well, who says anyone should be the Bechor? You know, sometimes a person has something. And then he loses it, and that's that. And nobody necessarily re- receives it. So why do we say, oh, you know, Reuven lost it, and Yosef gained it. Maybe Reuven just lost it, and then nobody gained it. So how do we know that, that Yosef, uh, Yosef got it? And moreover, why Yosef? We could explain easily to say, look, Yosef used the Bechor of Rachel. Rachel was, uh, was, ya- was the wife that Yaakov wanted to marry in the first place. So as a result, it went to him. But that didn't really seem to matter that much up until now. That is to say, Reuven was the Bechor. So why is it that once Reuven uh, is the Bechor, that Yosef gets it? That's what we need to, to figure out. So the Avni Nasser says, why, in, in general, as a cloud, why is it the Bechor gets double? After all, he's treated differently than the other brothers. He gets double the inheritance. Um, and there's even a mitzvah to accord greater respect to the Bechor. Um, from the first, Kabit in Avecha vet Imecha, the, um, the, 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 the Gemara in Ketuvot says that the et, right, kabet et avecha vet imecha, that et is coming to include the Bechor, that is to say the oldest brother is worthy of, uh, is, 
is where they have a certain amount of respect that's meant to be given. So our question is why? Why is he worthy of getting that? So that's because from a certain perspective, uh, the teams of the Bechor are greater. Now why is that? Because he has no sibling to look up to. That is to say, it's true he has his parents to look up to, and hopefully his parents are living up to a certain standard. However, they kind of lived in a different generation. They're not necessarily um, kind of living through the same experiences as he is. There's a generation divide. Um, younger siblings have a Bechor to live up to. That is to say, there's someone who's kind of going through the same thing as them, just a few steps ahead, and he's attaining, assuming he's attaining things, and he's attaining things. And therefore, that challenge is kind of broken up, broken up by a, what's it called, by the Bechor. And that's what, uh, that's what grants him that status as Bechor. Because since he doesn't have a mentor on his own level, the Bechor is meant to serve as that role model, and therefore he gets, the, uh, he gets a greater amount of respect, and he gets a greater inheritance for that. Now, Reuven lost the Bechor, and Yosef picked it up. Now, we're going back to asking, why did Yosef pick it up? And the answer to that says the Avni Nezer is because Yosef was, I mean, we're using this term loosely, Yosef was a self-made Bechor. Yosef was sold into Egypt. It's true, he had his, 17, his first 17 years with Yaakov Avinu, he was among family, he was among a positive role model. However, after that, he was all on his own. He had no family to look up to. He had no older siblings to guide him. He was completely devoid of any, um, uh, any culture or spiritual pursuits that were in line with what he had grown up with. And even so, he still, uh, he still uh, kept his status. He still achieved what he was meant to achieve and stay true to, the, to a Torah life and the way he was raised. And in that way, he was a Bechor because of those achievements. He, was, uh, he, he made himself into, into that role model, even though he didn't have any role models to look up to. And that is what, uh, and that is what that's how he picked up the Bechorah. And then just as a finishing thought, the way we actually see this clearly in the Pesuk, and we need to go back to Sefer Breshit, we're going back to Parshat Vayechi, um, chapter 48, verse 5, when uh, Yaakov wants to come and give the uh, brachas to, to Yosef. And we see something very interesting. So the Pasuk here says, Right? So it says, And now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt, before my coming to you in Egypt, shall be mine. Ephraim and Menashe shall be mine, like Reuven and Shimon. So we see that this is uh, this is where Yosef is effectively elevated, uh, not only to the status of a Chor, but even to the status of an Av. Now we need to qualify that immediately. And um, by the way, sorry, this is uh, based on a Torah Torah I heard from Rav Bernstein, just uh, for full disclosure. It is uh, online. It is, is 2011-2012 Shi'er on Journeys in Torah. I'll post it below. So uh, um, Rav Bernstein continues and he says, listen, that needs to be qualified immediately because Joseph is a transitional figure. And the way we see that is that sometimes he acts as an Av and sometimes as a Ben. Now the Ben is obvious, but how does he act like an Av? Well, at the end of the day, he is an Av Lishvatim. His sons became tribes. And so in that way, he does achieve some kind of status as an Av. And this is alluded to in the bracha that Yaakov gives him. He's called Evan Yisrael. Now what is Evan? So Rashi points out that this is a contraction of Av and Ben. He's both. There's part of Yosef that's an Av, that is an Av Lishvatim, and there's part of him that's a Ben, because he is one of the sons of, uh, of Yaakov. And Rav Hutner explains in Pach and Yitzchak that really there is a certain duality in him, because the Avot themselves, their whole lives are encompassed in Sefer Breshit, because the, the Ramban says this is Sefer Yetzira, it's the book of formation, it's the formation of not only the world, but also the Jewish people as a spiritual entity, uh, or as an entity in general. And the three Avos, therefore, have their whole lives, both beginning and ending, within Sefer Breshi. And truth is, we see that, too, with Yosef. Because Yosef dies. If we look at the very end of Sefer Breshi, it says, in chapter 50, verse 22, um, So and then we go on, and then the last passage, so his death is recorded in Vayechi, but his death is also recorded at the beginning of Parshat Shemot. If we look at verse 6, it says, And therefore, we see that Yosef has this kind of dual status as an Av, because his, his whole life is encompassed in Sefer Breshit, but he's still a Ben, because his death is also brought about in Sefer Shemot. 
And the, the Sefer Torah is alluding to that, knowing that it's trying to uh, kind of convey this, this sense of Yosef here. But now, going back to, to this Pasuk, there is something unusual about it. That is to say, the way Yaakov references uh, the Ef- Ephraim and Menashe. Because what does he say? He says, and now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt are formed by coming to you in Egypt shall be mine. Ephraim and Menashe shall be men like Reuven and Shimon. If Yaakov meant to just say that Ephraim and Menashe were meant to be Shvatim, he could have just said, Ephraim and Menashe shall be men like Reuven and Shimon. Why does he say, and now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt are formed by coming to you in Egypt shall be mine. Okay, we get that. We know that Ephraim and Menashe were born uh, were born in Egypt before Yaakov got here. Why do we need to be told that explicitly? So here Yaakov is explaining to us the reason why they became Shvatim. This is the conceptual background to them becoming Shvatim. Yaakov Venu is saying, unlike the other Shvatim, who were born and raised among the, among a Jewish family and who had Miazan influence, right? Your sons didn't have that. And even so, you raised them correctly. You raise them so correctly that they're on the, that they're on the same level as the other Shvatim, and and the fact that you achieved this before I came to Egypt and before the uh, the rest of their family came here too, that makes them worthy of becoming Shvatim, and that is the way that you are like an Av. That is explicit in the Psokim. If you read them carefully, it takes the Avni Nazar to really bring this out, but um, but just to highlight it as a final uh, as a final seal about this, what does it say in the very next pasuk? It says. That is to say, but progeny born to you after them shall be yours. They will be included under the name of their brothers with regard to their inheritance. What is, the, is Yaakov Avinu saying? The other children that you had, once they had come down, right? Once Yaakov came down, and once the rest of the family came down, now they'll be absorbed into, the, into their brothers' tribes, Ephraim and Menashe. Now, why is that? The answer is. Because those uh, those achievements that that attainment of raising the, uh, your children in such a in such a an amazing Jewish way that is not as special as what you did with Ephraim and Menashe. Your success with uh, with your first two children was far greater than with other with your other children because your first children were done only by you, whereas the other children had the benefit of living within within a Jewish family. And with that, I'll leave you. Shabbat shalom, and we'll see you next week.